Apple has revealed the iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max. Let's get into it. Here we're not getting a full redesign, but what we do get is a new titanium build. And so this material is lighter than what the stainless steel that Apple was using before. So it's something that I personally appreciate because I've always found that the pro model iPhones are a little bit too heavy. One of the things that I really like about it is the fact that the edges are kind of chamfered now. It's sort of like a mix of the modern squared off iPhone design and earlier ones that were curved. I really like the squared off look, don't get me wrong. It's, it's great, it's cool. But this kind of gives the iPhone 15 a bit of a flair. Like if, if someone was holding a 15 and a 14, there's a subtle difference between them. And I don't think I've been able to say that about the iPhone line for the last couple of years. Another change this year is that both of the sides of the phone pop off in terms of repairability. This is a big change. Last year, it was only the 14, not the 14 Pro. This year, it's both iPhone 15 versions. With the 15, there's these slight pastel hues that kind of look washed out when you hold them in uh, light or the sunlight. They kind of have this like interesting design to them. There's a yellow color that I personally really like. And then on the Pro side, there's a whole suite of new colors. The new Pro colors all have kind of like a metallic flare to them. They're, they're really neat. It's kind of a subtle change from what we've seen in the past. So moving on to hardware, there is a brand new button on the iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max. It's called the action button. Apple sort of realized that most people just leave their phone on mute and they've now turned the mute button into a physical button that you can press in and it can be programmable. So it works with certain things out of the box. For example, you can set it to launch certain focus modes. You can set it to launch your flashlight. But most interestingly, it works with shortcuts. Apple's software kind of feature that allows you to set up different apps to launch or other acts, instantly access different features on your iPhone. What Apple's done is kind of given you a physical button on this phone to launch shortcuts. And then of course there's USB-C. We knew this change was coming. It's been rumored for years. Apple's kind of presented it as we're in front of the European Union regulations, but that's, that's why the company's doing this. This isn't totally on their own volition. The iPhone 15 supports USB 2.0, which is a pretty old standard, but the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max offer a USB 3.0, which can get up to 10 gigabits per second. So I, I mean, if you're a very specific type of iPhone user that's transferring, I don't know, something like a large swath of files or something like that related to photography, that's a really useful feature for you. I, I don't think that a lot of people are gonna get that benefit from USB-C. I think primarily what you're gonna see is people that already own a lot of Apple devices that have USB-C cables or they own other products that use USB-C cables, they're gonna be thrilled people that live in just like an iPhone world where they have a bunch of lightning cables floating around, they're gonna be a little frustrated with this change because they're probably gonna to have to go out and buy a couple extra cables. Maybe you have a cable in your car, maybe you have one in the office, maybe you have one at home. You're only gonna get one cable when you buy the iPhone 15, so you might wanna replace those other ones. I think that'll be a bit of a very like minor pain point for some users. And then next up, we have the cameras featured in all of the phones across the new iPhone 15 line. I don't know a lot about cameras, so I'm gonna throw it over to Brad. He's gonna talk a lot about them. The only thing that I know is that there's a new five times optical zoom on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and that's the only thing that I care about. I care about it all. <laughs> so basically on the iPhone 15, they've got a 48 megapixel sensor. It's not the same 48 megapixel sensor we saw on the 14 Pro. Still seems really, really good. I mean, obviously the demo images we always see are fantastic, but they look fantastic here. And 48 megapixels on the iPhone 15 does mean a bigger sensor than last year's iPhone 14 and iPhone 13 and iPhone 12, so people will likely be upgrading from. So I think it's a big win overall. I guess that's really the only changes coming to the iPhone 15. Everything else kind of is software based or coming to the Pro. So moving on to the software stuff, there is a new sort of photonic engine pipeline, new HDR stuff. We'll always have to wait and see how that plays out over the year. It's hard to test and hard to tell on samples that aren't prepared to anything. But most importantly, and I think what excited me the most was the new portrait yeah, that's, stuff. That's really, really cool. Yeah, there's a new depth blur effect that should have a more gradual fall off along the ground. It should look more natural. And you can also do it in post. 
Oh yeah, yeah you, you can, can do it after the, the photo is shot. Yeah, and you can change the focus in post. So big, big things. It's kind of like cinematic mode, but just for photos. And I think people are going to use it a lot. And the coolest thing about that for me, anyways, is that you can do it across the 15 Pro and the standard 15. It's not exclusive to either phone. But yeah, moving on to the Pro versions, there is a lot of focal lengths. There are seven different focal lengths in the Pro iPhone now. So you get your ultra, or I guess we'll start all the way out. You get your macro. You get ultra wide, you get, I believe it is 28 millimeters or 26 millimeters. And then you can zoom in a little bit to like 30 and then 35. And you can set those three as your default. So you could have the wider kind of landscape lens. Or if you're someone like me who likes a 35 millimeter lens, you can now set that focal length as your default. So every time you launch the camera app, it just shows up. Yeah, it's just 35 cool. mil instead of 26. That's very cool. Yeah, and it does that by like cropping in the center. If you remember from the iPhone event last year with the 14 Pro, you could do this new 2X zoom by cropping in the 48 megapixel sensor down to 24, just kind of like halfway in. And now you can do that, but less at half. It's just like a different math to allow for other options, which basically gives you way, like I said, more lens options, more zoom ranges. And then of course, going all the way out to 3X zoom on the iPhone 14 Pro and 5X zoom on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is actually interestingly, um, I think the first change we've seen, not the first change, I guess the change, a big change we've seen differentiating the two Pro models since the 12 Pro, I think. I think the 12 Pro had a different camera. It had stabilization on the Optical Pro Max. image stabilization on one and not the other. So yeah, you're yeah. right, it is, it is the first one. Um, so a bit of a change up here, but 5X should be a huge game changer. I know I'm super excited to test it out. I really want to see what we can get with like natural 120 mil photo or optical zoom on an iPhone. Or it's 5X, but it's 120 mil equivalent, which uh, means a lot of zoom basically. And then I guess there was one other thing I wanted to say attached to that and it is escaping me right now. <laughs> Oh, what was it? Oh, and to allow for that zoom to happen, Apple has added a new three axis um, stabilization engine in the zoom camera. So it'll be hard to see. I guess I'm interested to compare it to things like Samsung and the Pixel 7 Pro, which also have 5X zooms, but Apple is promising a very steady experience, which should allow it to be more useful for video, which I always get excited about. And I think that's kind of all I have on photos, but there will be lots more coming on Mobile Syrup for sure. I'll, uh, I'll let you get back to talking about whatever it is. And last, and I, I don't know, it depends on how you look at it, whether it's, it's least is the new A17 chip. We're only getting that in the iPhone 15 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. It's not coming the, to the iPhone 15 or the iPhone 15 Plus. That still is rocking the A16 chip from last year. The A17, there's a ton of stats that Apple's thrown out, but for me, the, the key takeaway is that it's marginally better than last year's chip. But what they did show off is Assassin's Creed Mirage. At this point, it's, it's not even out. We, we have a preview of the game on the site. It's, it's a console level experience. Apple claims that the A17 chip is capable of ray tracing and other fancy graphical kind of effects and that developers are able to create console level experiences on the iPhone. I kind of have a believe it I'll believe it when I see it attitude with, with this kind of, this claim that Apple's made. And I, and I somewhat doubt that the version of AC Mirage that we're gonna get on the iPhone is going to be identical to what I'm gonna play on my Xbox Series X. But this is the dream. This is what I've always wanted. I, I wanna see console level games on a smartphone. And it looks like if what Apple's claiming about the A17 is accurate, that's actually a possibility at some point in the near future. So Brad's gonna make the iPhone prices pop on screen right now. Just remember that they're $30 more expensive than last year. It's not like the US, we do have a minor price increase with the iPhone 15 line. And the entire lineup is available for pre-order now and releases on September 22nd. And that's it. I think overall, this is again, like a marginal upgrade year for the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. I think on the 15 and the 15 plus side, you're getting a lot of cool camera features. It's a bit more of an upgrade. If you're rocking like an iPhone 14, you're probably not gonna have a lot here that's gonna make you wanna upgrade. But if you're using an iPhone 11, maybe an iPhone 12, there's probably enough interesting features here to make you wanna go out and buy a new iPhone. Thanks a lot for watching this video. We have a very cool podcast that we recorded in Apple Park in their fancy studio 
check that out. That'll be on our YouTube channel. Um, and then do all the YouTube stuff. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.